Today's Occupy Wall Street protesters bear the banner of the tolerant left. President Obama, who most recently was busy criticizing the angry Tea Party, praises the Occupy Wall Street movement, saying that they ought to challenge the excesses of Wall Street. The press legitimizes their tone and tenor, claiming that they bear the support of vast numbers of Americans and represent an inoffensive distaste for capitalist greed. Yet this left-wing populist movement carries with it banners proclaiming its anti-Semitism. The Emergency Committee for Israel posted a video this week showing Occupy Wall Street protesters telling Jews to go back to Israel, carrying signs reading, Gaza supports the occupation of Wall Street and Hitler's bankers. This might as well be a David Duke protest rather than a socialist one. Many people, especially in the media, find it odd that liberals so often link up with Islamic radicals and anti-Semites. The left likes to think of itself as fighting heroically against tyranny and fascism, while the right supposedly defends both. But the fact is that today, as in the past, the socialists and the fascists have common roots. They form an axis of unreason, a perspective they share with radical Islam, by the way, that makes all of them prone to the worst sort of conspiracy theories. The Jews always seem to be at the center of their worldview. The seeming Occupy Wall Street support for anti-Semites and Islamists makes them part of a broader red, green, brown axis. You know, since the time of H.G. Wells, socialists have marched with the banner of anti-Semitism, seeing Jews as a rebel force against the forces of homogenous class warfare. Jews are accused of being religious, separate, and nationalist. Leftists, of course, are secular, integrated, and internationalist. This criticism links up with the Islamic criticism of Judaism. That's why it's no surprise to see Communist London Mayor Ken Livingston marching arm in arm with Sheikh Yusuf al Karadawi of the Muslim Brotherhood, who says that Jews crucified Jesus and that Allah should purify the Jewish Zionist band of oppressors, killing them down to the very last one. And it's no surprise to see Noam Chomsky, a self-hating Jew, traveling to Beirut and embracing Sheikh Hassan Nasrallah, head of the radical Jew-hating genocidal group Hamas. This love affair has a third party too, neo-fascists and white supremacists who join to make common cause with the leftists and Islamists. These radicals despise the Jews too, as supposed incubi of world conspiracy. They see Israel and Zionism as the fonthead of the Protocols of the Elders of Zion. Thus, it is no surprise to see both the American Nazi Party and the Communist Party both supporting Occupy Wall Street. In Occupy Wall Street, the ideological World War II Ribbentrop-Molotov Pact rides again. What these various movements have in common goes much deeper than mere convenience. They're all utopian. Each, in its own way, wants to bring about the perfect society, to create a new man and a new world. Each, therefore, thinks of itself as progressive. The leftists believe that they'll create the brotherhood of man. The fascists believe that they will purge mankind of corruption. And the Islamists believe that they will create the kingdom of God right here on earth. What they all have in common, therefore, is totalitarianism and hatred for all those who refuse to bow to them. And their natural inclination, as with most totalitarian movements, is anti-Semitism. <laughs>